Greetings, everyone. I had somebody ask me, what components do I keep in stock on my messy bench here? Look at this. This is chaos. And yeah, I thought that would be a good subject for a video, especially for somebody wanting to get into electronics. We certainly need more hobbyists in this field. You know, it's not like it was in the 60s or 70s even when you know, they had all these kits available. And, um, you know, it's people are moving on to different things now. So I uh, want to keep the hobby alive. But what you keep on the bench might differ from what I need to keep on my bench. Because... Electronics hobby, it could branch out into so many different ways. You, know, you might be into tube amplifiers, you might be into microcontrollers, you might be into audio. I'm kind of into general electronics within audio. And you know, it just goes on from there. So, yeah, somebody was asking me, so I figured I'd make a video about it. Well, the first thing you need is storage. And I have these little drawer bins. I have one here, this one over here, that one there. Plus I have these things you can buy at hobby stores and such where they organize beads and things. But they're great for uh, organizing electronic components. This rack here I got back in the 80s for Christmas. Matter of fact, on the side, I have a Super Mario Brothers sticker. I got a uh, Nintendo Enter Entertainment System. And uh, about 35 years ago, I put that sticker on there, and it's been there ever since. So yeah, I guess the first thing to get into is resistors. You want to have a bunch of resistors on hand. And I go by the E-series codes, like E6 or E12. I don't want to get into exactly how that works, but it's just a numbering system for electronic components. That's why you see these weird values like 22, 33, 47, things like that. And I would recommend the E6. That's six different sets of numbers. And those numbers are divisible by 10 or even 100 or multiplied by 10, 100, 1,000, and so on to get the actual component value. And for a hobbyist, you don't need a whole lot of storage for that, just a few drawers. I have 12 plus additional one for random values for storing my quarter watt and half watt resistors. So your typical E6 code would be 10, 15, 22, 33, 47, and 68. Now, because I had a bunch of resistors in between those values, because I had E12 values, because the kits I bought just happened to have those, I used 12 drawers so I can store the E12 values. So those are kind of the in-between values you see here like the 12, 18, 27, and so forth. The problem I used to have, I had all my quarter watt resistors in two drawers. And every time I wanted to build a circuit, I had to search for the value through those piles of resistors, and it was a nightmare. And I never got around to organizing them because, well, it takes a few hours to sort out a bunch of resistors. So eventually I had enough and I 
sorted them out and put them in the drawers here. So how this works is, let's say I need a 4.7K ohm resistor. So I go to the drawer labeled 47, pull that out, and they're all going to have the first two color bands of yellow and violet. So all I have to worry about looking for is the third color band, which is going to be red for 4.7K. And believe me, it's much easier to find that than searching through a bunch of random colors. So I can easily find the uh, band color band I'm looking for. And I mix in the half watts and the quarter watts because... You know, that's, I don't have a lot of resistors, and it'll be easy to find. Now, if you separated all the resistors out by their uh, value, then I had to you know, split them up by wattage, I would need over a thousand drawers. And that doesn't make sense for a weekend hobbyist. Do it like this. It's pretty easy to find the value. doesn't take a lot of room. Every so often you need an oddball value, and I have this 13th drawer with uh, values that didn't fit in the E12 set of codes. Okay, so where do I buy the resistors? You can buy these cheap kits on eBay for tinkering. I do not use them in my finished products. They're, they do work. They're cheap, low quality get a bunch of resistors when I had a Radio Shack around they sold these resistors these kits they have uh, these are all E12 values they do skip over some but they pretty much cover all the ones you'd use and there's a smaller kit of half watt resistors you know, these cheap ones, they have really thin, spindly steel legs where these are um, tin copper leads. I do keep the 8th watt resistor separate, and I have uh, one of these bins dedicated for them. I actually have 14 instead of 12 because there's a couple oddball values, like 51 and... For some reason, there's some 30 ohms I had. Be at yeah, more of the same there. For flame resistant ceramic resistors, I have this box. Now, I don't have that many of them, so I just keep them in there. And for higher power than one watt, I also have some drawers. These are all values above 10 ohms, and I have values below 10 ohms. I could use for emitter resistors and amplifiers and such. Capacitors are more of the same. In this bin, I have electrolytic capacitors, mainly E6 organized. So I have one, ten, hundred, thousands. So, for example, in the tens row, I have tens, 22s, 33s, 47s. I don't really keep 68s around because that's a value in electrolytics I don't use much. I also have a little box of ceramic capacitors, the little multi layers that I use, and film capacitors. As far as brands go, electrolytics, I usually get like Nichicon or Panasonic. I buy from reliable, well, I buy all my components from reliable sources like DigiKey or Mauser. The guy who is asking me is in Canada, and, uh, you know, he has to ship them over the border. And there's probably some extra cost in that. I don't know what's available up in Canada as far as distributors for components. So if you can help me out in the comment sections, help that guy out, I'm sure he would appreciate that. For my silicon integrated circuit chips, 
being into audio, I kind of lean towards audio or power audio output chips. Like these little uh, chips here, TDA 7267s, lifetime supply of that, and a bunch of random chips here. My beloved TDA 2050s, LM1875s, all authentic, bought from Mauser DigiKey back in the day when they had them. Of course, the 1875 is still available. I just have a bunch of other random audio power output chips. Over here, I have a bunch of voltage regulator ICs. This is a bunch of, well, these are just sockets here. Here I have um, microcontrollers. A bunch of microcontroller chips I use. TO92 voltage regulators. Over here are a bunch of op amps. I'm not sure what this stuff is. Uh, that's a TL074. That's a four channel. Op amps. And I think these are all digital logic type chips. 7400 series or the 4000 CMOS. 555 timers. Then I have... Uh, I have some transistors bend over here. Uh, where are they? Oh, here's some. TO92s, TO3s, TO220s. I did make a video at one point of the transistors I like to keep in stock. So I'm sure that's changed. Here I have a drawer full of transistors. They're all baggied and labeled. There's just tons of them, tons of different types. I just can't get into every little, you know, part number that I keep. More transistors. I use these in my audio amp project. So yeah, and there's just, well, here's some caps. These are what I removed from, I reclaimed from old boards and things. They're still good. And that's a thing you should consider is, you know, instead of throwing away old electronics, scavenge them for parts. There's a lot of good parts. More capacitors. More chips. I'm not sure what those are. One thing I've noticed about quite a few people who are into electronics or have a hobby involving electronics kind of get nerdy about lighting. And, uh, well, at least for me, I am definitely nerdy about lighting. I have upstairs in the attic, I have boxes of incandescent bulbs, CFLs, high intensity discharge type lighting, you know, like your sodium vapor metal halide, mercury vapor, and of course LEDs. Yeah, I'm just kind of nerdy about lighting, including LEDs, so I have a bunch of bins of different types of LEDs. I keep on in stock here. These are all white. And I have uh, high intensity color types. Seeking out the brightest LEDs you can get, various colors. So yeah, that's kind of a side thing. I keep a bunch of LEDs around. This bin here, jacks and plugs. And in the rest of my drawers, it's just your typical random parts, alligator clips and screws and hardware. What else? Heat sink related stuff like heat sink compound and the little isolator or the insulators, things like that. And I get some vacuum tubes, a couple drawers of those somewhere. Yeah, there they are. More LED stuff. 
These are all LED components stripped out of various lighting things. Yeah, just it just goes on and on. I don't want to bore you with all the stuff I have. I have shelves full of these little tubs that have random electronic components I stripped out of things. A bunch of battery holders down here. It just goes on and on. A bunch of different connectors with wires. Yeah, like I say, it goes on and on. I have more stuff upstairs. Transformers and things. I think the guy was kind of asking me, what about the exact components and who do you buy from? Well, for example, op amps being in audio electronics. I use op amps like the... Any fifty five thirty two or the LM four five six two high quality op amp. Uh, sometimes I use the TL O seven two. You know all these are dual op amps. Of course, purchased from DigiKey or Mauser. What you actually need, you just have to figure out what your project is and you know buy the parts. And over and you buy extra stuff, of course, and over time you start building up a uh, nest egg of on hand electronic parts. Well, I think I'll wrap it up here. Hopefully, that somewhat answers the question of what components I keep on hand and a little bit of how I organize it. Yeah, it's kind of chaos with most of it, but I just know where a lot of stuff is it's just been that way and no need to change it well thanks a lot for watching hope it helps you out and we'll catch you on the next one